Welcome everyone to a casted game for Age of Empires 4. And today, spawning in the southeast corner of the map, playing in blue, we've got 3DB playing as the Japanese. And his opponent in the northwest, playing in red, we've got Averly playing as the Ayubids. Welcome everyone to Lippany. Hope you're having a great morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. And we're going to have a great game today. I can feel it in my bones. 3DB versus Averly on Lippany. With this particular matchup, it's exciting because uh, I think there's a lot to unpack on this one. Like, first of all, we're going to need to talk about the Civilization matchup and then actually talk about the map. It has ramifications. So the Japanese, a great civilization with a primarily a, a nice pike in the Castle Age. Early Castle Age is when they get the, you know, the, the Yorishiro, get it into production builders, they get rip-roaring in terms of production speed, they start spamming out units like anything. The Ayubids, on the other hand, they are a bit more flexible. They can go for the Castle Age. A very good timing, actually, for both civilizations of the Castle Age. The Ayubids maybe look to try and get the relics nice and early. Well, so do the Japanese. They, in many ways, they're very similar in that regard. But what I feel actually sets the Ayubids apart in this matchup against the Japanese on this map in particular is the berries. So the Ayubids, you know, they get a better, faster gathering rate on berries. But also the fact they can keep their scout out nice and a little bit longer to get more sheep. More importantly, if they do go for the growth upgrade, and they may not necessarily get to the food age, but if they do get it to get to the castle age, they get an additional 100 food per berry bush. And it feels like he's almost posturing towards that because he's you know, split up the villagers. Because if you do take a berry bush in its entirety, you do not get the extra bonus of the 50 food or the 100 food whenever you take the, the growth upgrade. On the other hand, you know, the Japanese can posture towards berries as well like not necessarily long term or as a big way but they do get Tawara and so they would look to well doesn't seem like he's getting actually but he might do eventually possibly we'll have to see either way in the berry is pretty decent as a food income at the initial one initial point there that the Japanese can rely on it if they wish to but it's not really looking to do that what he will rely on is is the Cura storehouse but but specifically on this map the fact they've got extra berry bushes really plays into the hands of the Ayubids. Like the Cura Storehouse is, is the same as it is on any other map. It's the berries, though, that the Ayubids will take advantage of. And uh, speaking of relics, by the way, pretty evenly spread, but I've got to say this one's kind of a little bit on the side of B. A little bit uh, fortunate in that regard in terms of RNG, but of course with the Dervishes out, possibly, for the Ayubids in the Castle Age early on, they're, they're pretty fast on their feet. They can get there quickly. And it will be the military wing, which is a nice, nice starting for the Ayubids. Very typically seeing this upgrade. Going to get the uh, free Desert Raider. Every two minutes they'll get one. And that will do some damage in terms of putting some pressure on the forward gold, which is something that actually B needs to try and protect. Can I just say one thing? That forge is in a perfect spot. Holy moly, you can't really ask for much more, right? On the gold and the stone. Beautiful. Certainly if the Japanese are thinking about the castle age, they could probably need to look, try and get some outposts because both golds are really far forward on one screen. So you can imagine if the Ibis pressure this area and try and solidify it with an outpost, it can be very difficult for B to gather gold. Like the, the next golds are like in the middle of the map. So this is going to be a hotly contested area. And the flexibility that Ayubids can come in clutch here, being aggressive, is definitely going to be a way to try and do some damage on this particular map generation. Which is a beautiful thing in Age of Empires. Like a lot of RTS games, you have symmetrical maps, you know, predefined, pre-spawned, everything's fixed. Um, whereas uh, in Age of Empires, you know, there's a bit of RNG involved. You've got to play the map, got to scout it out and uh, make decisions and adjust. Now you are one of those civilizations that can adjust pretty well. Now it's got a nice back gold there. They could potentially wall up to the edge of the map. Could be important if the Japanese do pack a punch in the castle age, maybe with high mobile units with mounted samurai. Something we typically see a lot of players like B actually opt to do. To see if that's going to be on the cards today. And B coming in with the, the sheep. It's actually kind of nice for the Japanese as well. Just like the Berry Brothers, I like to call them the civilizations that, you know, posture towards the Berry's opening, like the Ayubids, for instance. And they allow the scout to go a little bit more aggressive in the scouting pattern, but actually Japanese are one of those civilizations that don't necessarily get a huge Berry bonus, but they can be aggressive with the scout as well, because they, you know, go to a couple of villages and Berries with this fine, but they get the Kira Storehouse as soon as they age up, so they'll have some guaranteed income as soon as they age up with the farms. He's a scout, you know, 
He used to bring maybe one or two sheep and then can venture out far out. One desert raider, they're pushing villages away from gold. It does mean that B needs to commit to some archers. He does actually look to get Yumi Ashigara quite often. I've seen him do it time and time again. And we're seeing it in action today. The only concern I have with it, going up against the Ayubids, is that Ayubids yeah, they do love to get horsemen, as you can see. And uh, in the car stage, they scale really well with uh, with camel lancers. Don't forget as well on the castle age, the Ayubids are one of the civilizations that can build siege engines on the ground with military units. And now they've got the military wing, get to build them with cavalry too. So with the Manjanik, they you know they 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 push Yumi Ashigaru back pretty well. So the Japanese will need to try and protect them if he does scale them in numbers. They're pretty fast on their feet, so they can maybe micro their way out of Manjanik shots. We have to see how much he looks to do that. Now he's committing with a second archer range and a stable. So definitely playing that extended feudal age. Which, by the way, is actually kind of an interesting one, right? So when you play an extended feudal age, you kind of want some sort of eco bonus, ideally, to be backing you up. So you, you, you're doing damage military-wise, but if you've got eco bonus to go with it, it's super nice. And the Ayubis have the 10% gather rate on the villagers by the tier 1 of the Golden Age. The Japanese... I don't really have that much. I mean, they've got the free farms, which is definitely great for a farming transition. But I've got to, I've got to say, the Arabians maybe have a slight edge on that. Moving around the right side, pushing the villagers off berries. And with the kind of map positioning that the Arabians have with the mobility at the moment, with the just high mobile units he's got on the field, it does mean that food is going to become a... Not so much of a problem because he's got the Cura storehouse, but it has to be very condensed and uh, allows the Ibis maybe to push towards the berries a bit more, which is exactly what they want to take advantage of. Speaking of berries, these berries about to expire. A oh, couple of units riding on in. You may actually going to pick off a desert raid or two. We'll have a bit more of a trouble of dealing with the horseman. Does have steeled arrow there, which will certainly help pack in a punch. Iron under mesh not actually in yet for Averly, so I need to try and get that in. I mean, he's obviously queued it up, so it will take a bit of time. Probably doesn't want to really engage until that's in, to be fair. Because there's a decent number of Yumi Ashigaru. Even with horsemen, you really want that iron under mesh upgrade. And he's going to back away. So we'll probably see a little bit of downtime as the Yumi Ashigaru is trying to chase. And whilst we get there, I'd like to say a very big thank you for everyone supporting the channel, whether it be on Twitch and YouTube. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Whether it be uh, through just watching, you guys are absolutely valued. But also a special mention to the YouTube channel members and the Twitch subscribers. And thanks once again, by the way, Salties, for the gifted subs earlier. But the Yumi are in decent numbers. I mean, I've got to say, the Ibis are pushing hard with the archers, especially with the Iron Undermesh in now. Despite not having Steeled Arrow, he's going to still pack a punch. No uh, Iron Undermesh just yet for B. He's getting it now. Going to be a bit of a back and forth, and... I think if he gets a couple more cavalry units, Ayubis could tank a little bit. You can see Yumashigaru trying to take out the horseman. Possibly will with the next volley. Doesn't quite manage it. Just a little bit of HP remaining. The next volley certainly will take it out. Village is going up to berries and hiding out on the stealth floor as the Yumashigaru. But I think he's going to start to be outnumbered. The defenders of Vanshi working out for Averly. With the horseman chasing through and B might try and kite this a little bit behind all of this though. This is allowing B just to make sure he gets gold income for his upgrades. Commits to another third archery range. Really playing this heavily with the archery range units. Okay, he's starting to be peppered with arrows. This is not favourable for B. He has to back away. Two horsemen going to bear the brunt of a lot of arrows. They do manage to escape there in the end. Just about. All right, double stable, double arch range for the iBirds, playing very extended feudal age. We'd love to see it. Now the question is, how far does Averly push? He's got to be making sure that he doesn't overcommit. Trying to go on stone here for B, trying to get the Daimyo Manor upgrade most likely. 
He's committing with the horseman. A couple of uh, arrows taken, that's for sure. But defender's advantage is going to work well for B. He's got to be careful, Avili, not to overextend. Like, he's got decent massive units. But that can change really quickly with the units popping out for B. And you can see it happening already. As archers for Avili have to back away. Going to try and uh, just let the horseman tank and sacrifice themselves. He's got to keep the Yumi Ashigaru away, ideally. But actually taking the fight, I'm, I'm, it's not going to be too terrible for Avili at this stage. He might take a decent trade, but the problem is... Added a couple more horsemen for B, and he might clear this up. It's not too bad, actually, for Avery. Like He's got decent numbers, but he's got to get reinforcements in quickly. It could have been a lot worse. He's pushing his back, OB, slowly but surely. But production is looking good for the Ayubids, and he's benefiting from the extra 10% gather rate in the villages, of course, at this moment. Down on the side. Wait, B? He lost a village to the walls already. He's focusing on the front, right? He's microing pretty heavily. He might lose another. Oof, God. Okay, he's getting the Diamond Manor upgrade as we speak. And also getting the first Blacksmith upgrade. And this is a brutal. Oh, he spots it now. It doesn't lose another villager, thankfully. Yeah, it is difficult, right? Because you get so many pings and notifications. Sometimes you actually get the first one and then you don't get another one for quite some time. Like, there's a bit of a cooldown on it, so if you miss the first one, you kind of have to wait for a bit of time for the next one. Can I get the walls on a... I love these walls, actually. Can I protect the berries and the deer camp? And two massive gold uh, stone veins, rather. That's a pretty, pretty nifty wall. Adding in the third stable. So both players really playing extended feudalage. I mean... So the thing about the Kira Storehouse and Farms, whilst it's fantastic to uh, reduce the, 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 the pain of a farming transition, it's just like a one-off kind of thing, right? You get a set of farms and that, that's it. That's that's your bonus done. The Aibas, though, 10% village gather rate, it just works globally on all your villages. It's actually really nice. Having said that, Daimyo Mano, definitely going to be boosting up the villager gather rate on the farms, 25% at least. So that's going to be counted in to the calculations, of course. Possibly, possibly think about diving in. I don't think he can take it really just yet. Doesn't have the numbers that he needs on the right side. Taking the fight. Arch numbers in the stealth forest at the moment. Yumi Ashigaru pushing on forward. Decent number of horsemen though for Averly. That's actually starting to be a bit of a scary force for Avil, i got to say. He's not taking the fight just yet. Doesn't want to take it until he feels completely ready about winning a fight. But it feels like he's getting to that critical mass that he needs. We do now see the Uma Bannerman, though, increasing the attack damage from the cavalry units. By a good 15%. About to take the fight. Horsemen diving in on each other. Yumi Ashigaru focusing the artist behind. In fact, the Yumi Ashigaru focused on the Desert Raider. But don't forget, actually, the Desert Raiders, they do add in the Camel Unease. To reduce the damage output from the horseman from the Japanese, but he's taking the fight either way, and I don't think he has enough B. He's being pushed heavily. Arch numbers looking good here for Averly. Front line going down for B. Mostly horsemen. I think the Desert Raider getting so much value with the Camel on knees. Adds another one as well. Yumashigaru trying to take them out to try and damage or reduce the amount of uh, damage reduction that's on effect because of it. But look at the horseman numbers. Averly, he's winning this fight in a big way. B might be in trouble. He has to back away the Yumashigaru as much as he can now. The Yurashigaru do have a faster movement speed than the Archer. The trouble is they're being chased down by Horsemen. And I can tell you now, they don't move faster than the Horsemen. I'm to back away. A couple of Horsemen added to the fight for B just to try and buy as much time for the Yurashigaru to retreat. But good aggression, good fight win there by Avery. And a big thing that actually really did it for him. It was the Camel on ease. How's it going basically, baby? Happy doing well. It's good to see you. And guys, if you're watching on YouTube and thinking, what am I talking about? Yeah, I'm streaming live on Twitch. I think you guys know this by now. So I do engage with Twitch chat on occasions when I can. I'm good, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope things are good down under. Hopefully nice and sunny there. It's a bit cold here in the UK at the moment, but it's getting there. It's springtime, actually. It's slowly getting there. I do prefer... I think spring is probably my favourite season, actually. It's like... It's nice and warm and everything's blooming away, but it's not too hot either. 
I suspect in Australia, guys are probably heading towards winter. It's taking the fight Avery. Now, after a really good first initial fight, just a little bit earlier, this one doesn't seem as clear cut, actually. The defender's advantage working well for B. Avery does have to back away, but he is reinforcing heavily with another Desert Raider, which is going to help a lot with Rams as well. Bear in mind, the Ibers don't need to actually... Well, they got Siege Engineering for free, right? They could build these Rams on the ground. Even with the uh, the cavalry, believe it or not, with the military wing upgrade that he got earlier on. And actually, this is going to be huge because like, it doesn't seem like a lot, one ram. But the big difference maker in this fight, what it means is if B wants to try and challenge this ram, he has to focus with his military on the ram. And that allows Avery to focus on his military, on his enemies' military. And you can do the math. It's not going to be great for the Japanese. He's taking the fight either way and I, he doesn't have enough here. Now, he does have the Yumi Bannerman going to give an additional 15 attack damage bonus on these Yumi Ashigara, but it's not going to be enough, and Horseman can attack as much as he possibly can. Does lose the Desert Raiders, so any Horseman do pop out, but the Japanese won't be nerfed a little bit from the Camelanese at all. Avery, though, he's pushing on in 16, 17 minutes into the game, and he's going to lose the first archer range, potentially, although he's actually repairing that. That's one way to deal with it, but if the archers for Avery do start to focus on the villagers, repairs will start to stop, and it's not looking great. But he has to back away. Now, he does have the uh, Daimyo Mana to retreat to. But, I mean, this is not looking a bit... This is looking a bit dicey. Look at the military numbers here for the Ibids. This is where they come online. Like, 10% gather rate doesn't sound like a lot, but... This is what can happen with it. Yeesh. Down in the south. Berry villages. Oh, God. This is great play by Avery. I love this play. Just to pull away a couple of horsemen to attack the food sources is super important. Uh, this is smart as well. Trying to take the berries. We do see B do this a lot, actually. He tries to be aggressive on the mid-map to try and take resources, but it's pretty risky. Like, if he loses those villagers, it's, it's a problem. Speaking of losing villagers, the villagers were lost on the berries, and more importantly, it's caused a lot of idle time. Avery continues to push down in the middle, 50 military to 21, looking a bit dicey. And at this point, Avery doesn't even need to think about castle. He just continues with the feudal age aggression, and he should be fine. It's all down to the Japanese and how they can defend this. In the north, though. Horseman, yeah, he spotted it with the villagers, right? He didn't want... Th th this is smart. This is really smart by Averly. He had villagers there, but he didn't fight with the villagers. He wanted B to think he was safe and secure, or not so much safe and secure, but he wanted him to think he's getting away with it. I'll tell you what, he wasn't getting away with it, because Averly moved cavalry right there, and that's a lot of villagers. I mean, some will go down, but the big thing is idle time. B struggling on food in a big way. In fact, you know what? Averly might even think about the castle. He's got plenty of resources in the bank. Plenty of wood. He might need to try and actually... Uh, Get some farms out actually with that. Potentially move a couple of villages away from gold. And he's doing that just as we speak. Understandably so. Oh god, those villages though. They're going to be caught by the archers. That's massive. That pivot around the right side is going to be huge. He's going to take out a lot of villages. And B, whilst his village account is still relatively healthy, like he's going to lose a lot of military. I mean, to be fair, B is still kind of holding on with the Yumi Ashigaru mass. Averly, this isn't actually that clear a fight because a lot of units are weak for Averly. So it's backing away in the stealth forest, but might come in with another push with the horseman down the middle. Averly, though, feels like he's done damage. I, do you know what? I've got to say, though, like numbers wise, it's kind of crazy how B is held on. Bear in mind, though, I suspect that the next stage coming in. Yeah, there it is. Look at that. It's going to be the culture wing advancement. So whilst the numbers look good, or look relatively even. I mean, there's a lot of resources in this that's actually different because Avery is going up to the castle age, but he's going to be hard stuck in the feudal age in a big way. So Avery definitely got the ascendancy here. He's going to take the fight here, but he needs to take a really good decisive win. He has to. But if it doesn't work, I mean, this is a good choke point here for, for Avery. I mean, the fight's going to be happening. There's no real retreat from this. Decent number of horsemen, though, for Avery coming around the back. And wait, I'm not sure who's trapped. Is it Avery or is it B? Who wants to be in this fight? Who doesn't? I mean, the Yuma Bannerman gets the extra 15% damage output, which is actually pretty, pretty good in this regard. But horseman numbers, um, yeah, dwindling. I think it's going to be a relatively even trade. It's probably, probably going to be a little bit better for B, possibly. But the big thing is that, look at this, units still trickling in down the middle. And whilst the village count is the same, I'll tell you what, the tech up coming in for the Avery League really soon is going to be massive. Still 20 seconds away on that one, but... Down in the middle. Yumeshikara numbers, uh, they're being picked off actually. Reinforcements, this is not, not, not ideal for B. He needs to clump, clump together if he can, ideally. He will clear this up actually. This is a big fight that B needed to take and he takes it and he wins it. Well, the big problem is now for Averly is uh, he needs to find a way just to keep the unit numbers alive so he can get the tech up and get the upgrades. If he can do that, 
then surely he's going to be in a good spot. B now. His task is to do some damage. He's got military advantage, but he's got to do damage. Because he is hard stuck in the feudal age. So it's one thing Avery being in the castle age. The problem for B is he can't get to the castle age himself. The moment he stops producing units to try and get to the castle age is the moment that he starts to get overrun. So he has to take some decisive fights, get himself in a position where he has a good standing army, maybe some static defences to buy some time to get the castle age. I'll tell you what he's doing, it feels like it. Like the Yumiashigaru pushing away the archers. Bear in mind the movement speed for the Yumiashigaru means that they can gap close on the Ayubid archers in a really big way. And they, there's no escape for them. You can see that 46 military to 10 and Averly is not in a clear cut winning position just yet. Something that will change things though are the camel lancers. And maybe a Manjinik or two could be devastating. But B, he has to do some damage. He's got to find a way to get the castle age himself. That's uh, going to be a tough ask. Going out to gold now. Going to get 600 gold and at least another 1,000 food odd. Something like that. But he's got to keep up pumping units too. But there is a decision to make at one point. What point does B think he's got enough of a standing army to survive and... You know, coming up against an onslaught of castle aid units soon. It's killing a lot of villagers, though. Holy moly. Wolf's been chasing that down. Good bit of raiding. Uh, B. He needs to make sure he doesn't overextend. He, he's, his mind's set elsewhere because there's raiding coming in for the, the Ayubids. Oh, God, okay. This is an overextension, right? Like, he got a lot of value, but... Uh, what, it, what it does do though, it buys him type, right? So Yumiashigari might not be a necessary unit that he scales into the Castle Age. So, uh, you know, these units are probably dead, but it does buy him a little bit of time. The trouble is, it's not enough time. It doesn't feel like enough time. He needs a lot more time to get into the Castle Age. And this is going to be a massive raid here on that woodline or the, the deer camp, I think he was taking. He was taking something, either way. Good thing he's got the gate on that west side. He's going to walk on through and try and save those villagers as much as possible. Yumiashigari, though, movement speed helping him, that's for sure. He's still. Desperate to get to the castle age. He's got a decent standing army. Maybe some palisades will help him along the way, but it's looking tricky. But definitely a great game of Age of Empires. The strategy on play and offer. That's for sure. Avery really playing this well. Game's not over there yet. That's for sure. B. I mean, look at the production they're going down. Let's take a look at the House of Wisdom. This is what's actually really nice of them, because it scales really nicely in terms of the way the game flows. When you get to the next stage, Castle Age tends to be when you get to Tier 2. The research speed is 50%. It's coming out at the perfect time. Tier 3, production speed, extra 20%. So it just... The, the House of Wisdom bonuses, they are so good at the times that they come in. And Avil has got what he needs, but what he needs now is a massive Castle Age units, and they're coming in in. B. He's going to go up to the next stage of floating gate, but this is critical for B. He needs to make sure he doesn't lose his army before they get upgraded, and he might just. Camel Arnies with the Camel Lancers. Does he dive in? Doesn't have any spearmen. I think I think Avery takes the fight. There's no reason not to. I mean, there's a couple of spearmen involved there. Well, I okay, that's a lot of spearmen. To be fair, maybe Avery backs off. Back off, back off, back on up. There's too many spearmen. And B. Actually, adding in the barracks with the spearmen, it's been a clutch play over that. I think without spearmen, Avery takes that fight, and he wins it. But Spearman changed everything. A couple of Yumi Ashigari are going to be focused on the west side. They go down. On the east side, walling up static defences. This is exactly what B needs. It's going to buy the time to get to the floating gate landmark. But it's going to still take time to get those upgrades. And I'll tell you what, it doesn't have the villages on food. It doesn't have much of a bank of food at all. In fact, a lot of villages that will build on the floating gate landmark came from food. But they will not return. A lot of them will die on the way back. Yorishiro. Does he get sniped? No, he gets it inside the archer range eventually. That'll allow him to get some uh, on a musha, maybe. But uh, he said taking some heavy losses. This is veteran archers. They get uh, camel lancers. Yeah, this is tricky. B losing the uh, Yumashigaru mass. The worst possible time before they get upgraded to veteran. Taking the ball on the west side. So food income going to be secured a little bit on the west side. That's definitely going to be handy and helpful. Avery though. Building up unit numbers and villagers backing away from gold. Uh, this is the concern, right? We talked about this earlier on the cast. This area here, how critical it is. This gold, he, is, he needs it. And he's not going to get clean access to it. Not with the camel lancers involved. He really has to find a way to deal with the uh, the spearmen, though. And it's going to be Manjanik. I like the player. As long as he keeps the Manjanik safe and secure, the spearmen numbers is something that B is, is uh, keeping up. And it's actually kind of keeping him in the game, actually. 
things could change in a heartbeat with one or two uh, big shots from the Manjanook. Could be devastating. And now behind all this, by the way, the tech up to the car stage for the Ayubis does allow him access to the relics. There's already got three in the bank. Could possibly take this one in the middle. There's uh, got uh, two sacred sites already. So a good amount of gold incoming. Another sacred site capped as well as the relic being brought home. It's going to dive on in. Spearman might brace on this. B needs to be paying attention. So does Averly. Uh-oh. There's a camel on the ball villagers. Oh, B has to back away. That's a lot of villagers that are going to go down. Taking the fight, Spearman a gauge against the Camel Lancers. Camel Lancers do back away, but Manjanik deploys on the Yumi Ashigaru in a big way and takes a lot of HP off them. Yumi Ashigaru is probably what remains the most, and uh, Spearman numbers dwindling here for the Japanese. I think this is game. Like, there's not enough Spearman now, and that allows the Camel Lancers to get on top of the Yumi Ashigaru, which is a direct counter unit. Manjanik as well. There's no way for the Japanese to deal with that Manjanik. This is problematic, to say the least. And yeah, Manjanik slaughtering those Yumi Ashigaru. Camel Lancers starting to reign supreme. The heavily armored units. Taking out the Japanese units down to 20 so far. The production is on the front line, so anything that pops out gets sniped. All the horsemen might try and stab the Magic. The Camel Lancers do get in the way just in time. I think the Magic goes down in the end, but horsemen numbers will start to dwindle because of that. Look at the reinforcements coming on in for the IU bids. Does have a mounted samurai that will help somewhat, but I mean, ideally, the mounted samurai in the Camel Lancers damages their damage output quite significantly, reduces it. Camel Lancers, though, they're starting to dwindle in number. Uh, he's still got the good momentum though, and B has lost a lot of villagers in the meantime. Still losing the villagers on that wood line on the right side as well, getting good ra raiding with the camel lancers. And the relics in play, three of them, four of them about to be brought in, and maybe even the fifth. And the two sacred sites in play for the Ibers already. The economy is better, the military is better, and I think, ladies and gentlemen, this is probably going to be game. If he does start to lose his units that are popping out, as they pop out, he needs to try and mass up, but. Looks like the Iber's just going to camp on this army and B is trying to hold on as much as he possibly can but the numbers are starting to dwindle and it feels like this is a tall order to come back from. Yeah, it certainly does. Down to 48 villagers. Seven military. He's starting to be overrun a little bit. A couple of villagers that he does have are idled. This is not looking good for B. And I think the Iber's, they just continue to trickle in. Maybe, okay, there we go. That, that'll be it. He's got two Tower of the Sultans. They got built pretty quickly, didn't they? Or are, they are they actually built? I don't think they are just yet. They're not built yet, but he's threatening to. Just to make sure that he sees the game up. But he's diving on in. I mean, the big thing is that he's not necessarily killing anything, but he's keeping the villagers idled, and that's enough for B to tap out. A great game of Age of Empires for on Lippany. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. If you're watching YouTube, make sure you give the video a thumbs up. Take care, and see you next time.